Hi guys, I'm Brickroad. Welcome back to Let's Play Zeo Drifter. We are 62% of the way through this game. Awesome. Alright, so I did... I, it's called Mutant Muds, is what the game is called. Mutant Muds. And yes, it does have this whole uh, uh, depth of field thing where you jump in the background. And yes, the hero of it was that guy Max that we just saw. Where do we need to go? Back to Pink World, I think. Let's drive there like we've had a few. Um, and it looks really fun, and I think... Like, it says it's on Windows, but I haven't checked to see if it's on Steam. If it's not, it says it's on PSN. I might just grab it on PSN. Why not? Okay. So we're back in Pink World now. So you, basically, you go pink, or you go green, pink, green, orange, pink. And you get the second thing in Pink World. And it's my least favorite power-up in the game. But you can't complete the game without it, so... I've already taken damage. I've already taken damage because I'm great at Zeo Drifter. See, I'm going to have to check out this guy's uh, previous game, this Mutant Muds, and see what it's about. Looks fun to me. Um, it was definitely looks like it was originally conceived as a 3DS game, though, because of the... Uh, where do I have to go? Down, down and around. Okay, so yeah, up there was just a the power-up, which I've already got. Um, you know what? We better take the... Uh, oh, that's not the health. There's health. Where is it? Where is it? Because of the uh, depth of field effects, we can jump in the background. Um, it looks like the game is based around that. And I guess the 3DS, if you like the 3D effects on the 3DS, I happen to not like them. But if you like them, I guess it would add quite a bit to the game? I don't know. I think the 3D, the 3D effects on the 3DS are terrible. I always keep my 3D turned off when I play. I tend not to play too many action games on it anyway, just because it's so uncomfortable to hold. This is Zeo Drifter. This has nothing to do with my uh, take on the 3DS. So why don't I just stop talking about it? Why don't we just run across this pool? And then... Ow! That's the ceiling. Hello, let's get up top. There we go. Okay. Um... I don't like the power-up we're about to get, and I don't really want to explain why just yet. There's a... Ooh. Come on. Oh, I didn't take any damage. We're at the boss fight already. Yeah, we're at the boss fight. Okay, let's get to work. Alright, bro. Ah, oh, I keep doing that. It's like the fourth time that I jumped when I should have ran. Where the most powerful shot is just comes out of my gun very slowly. But if you're careful, you can get a couple of hits in. Did I literally just do that? Did I really just plane shift back directly into the lava? I think I did. I am getting tired of this bubble attack. We're gonna do something on this bubble attack. in a bit. Um, oh, he's got a new trick. Now he's got the green cross attack. Which, hey, it's super easy to dodge. You just run from one side of the screen to the other. There was nowhere for me to dodge or I just had to eat that shot. It's fine. It's fine. I got my most powerful gun. You're just gonna eat all this damage. Can I try to heal? Yes. Now, you can actually shoot the little healing capsules that he eats here. And if you're super fast, you can grab one. You actually get an achievement in the game for healing during the boss fight. I almost have you dead. You had to do the bubble attack. Ah, I shifted twice, I only wanted to shift once. I get all panicky, because I don't really know a good way to dodge this bubble attack. I mean, you can shoot him away from you, but... Kind of inconsistent, because he still kind of tries to track to your location. This might be a case where you want other gun effects, besides the two gun effects that I use. Maybe if you use the wave gun, or the spread, or gun, or whatever, it's a lot easier. But it's not going to be a big problem. Next time we fight him, bubble attack's not going to be a problem. Because we have the worst upgrade in the game. The solar flare. It's a charge beam. Guys, it's... 
It's a charge beam. You have to turn it on. And it replaces your awesome gun with this charge beam that's really... It's got some properties that make it useful, like it can blow up these walls, we can destroy those now. Where are you at? There you are. Uh, it acts as a shield as well, as we will see right here. Yeah. But, you have to go into the subscreen to turn it on and off. Why not just map, like, a solar flare toggle to, like, the select button or whatever? I don't know. They already didn't do that. I'm missing a power-up. I am. It's up here. Knew I was missing a power-up. So it makes the Kong Shell guys a little bit easier. But, literally, if you have a super powerful shot like I do, you can kill them faster just doing that. By the time you go into your menu and... How come I didn't break? Oh, it wasn't a fully powered shot. That's why. So yeah, by the time you go into your subscreen and turn on the solar flare, and, uh, you could have just killed the conch shell guy with a couple of super-powered shots. So, that's all well and good. Now, there's one or two more power-ups. Nope, just one. And it's all the way back... All the way to the other side of the level, basically. We gotta go through the whole level again. Backtrack all the way to, uh... Where we got the plane shift ability. I forget now. Did I show you guys the wall? Back there? I think I probably showed you the wall. I don't remember now. I don't remember what I did two videos ago. We have to go... Yeah, down and around. We would have an easier time if I went down the other way, because I could have gone down in the background, but I already didn't do that, so... So if you do want to get the 100% of this game, there is a lot of backtracking. And I guess if I had to criticize it, that is another criticism I would have of the game, is the backtracking is not very fun. I'm trying to think now. Did I, did I actually mean that? It's not very fun. Uh, the game is still fun. It's, uh... I mean, the game is too short to get, like, tedious or obnoxious or anything like that. But the way that the backtracking works for most levels is... Usually there's something all the way at the end of the level... ...that you can get with a power-up that you can't have the first time you're in the level. Like, right there. I got my next gun. My gun's getting pretty beefy, not gonna lie. Instead of, uh, hiding the power-ups, like, on the critical path of the game. Which would have been my preference. I mean, that's how Metroid does it, and every game should be Metroid, right? Okay, that's enough of that. And it's not like the backtracking took forever, like, we're, the levels are small enough... And usually, they're a little easier to traverse with your new power-ups. Like, last time we came through here, we had to go through that whole plane shift and go through that difficult spot. This time, we just skipped all that by using the jet. So, some thought went into what the player was going to have to do when it comes to backtracking. Like, some thought went into it, and I'm glad for that. You know, that, that, does, make me, that does make me happy. I think the trick to really enjoying Zeo Drifter uh, is just to not assume too much. Just, they wanted to make this fun little Spaceman game. That's what they made. With really floaty jump physics. <laughs> Ooh, I timed that correctly. This conch shell, if you... What they want you to do is they're equipped with Solar Flare. So you can block him. Did I already get this over here? I did. I got that already. Um, yeah, we're done here. We are done with Pink World. We can move on unless I die. Unless I get shot by four more, three more stupid things on the way out. And I almost did. I almost just ran right into that bullet right there. 
Now we're gonna make it. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna live, guys. Two more times. Now we're good. We made it back to the Telepro in one piece. I'll see you tomorrow. Shout out to Toodlesteam for sponsoring this video and to everyone who makes this channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.